Hi, I'm Joe Walensky, and I'm the program manager for Convey UX, and that is the annual user experience conference that's been held in Seattle for the past uh, seven years. We're going into our eighth year. It's uh, produced by Blink UX, and uh, I work for Blink, and uh, we're really happy to be putting on this conference uh, once again, and one of the fun things that I get to do uh, is to talk with our many uh, interesting personalities that will be speakers at the conference. And so today, I am speaking with Steph and John Ellis. Hello, Steph, and how are you today? Hello, doing well. Thanks for having me. Well, uh, I'm at Blink Seattle headquarters office in downtown Seattle. It's kind of a gray day here, but where are you speaking to us from? Uh, downtown Portland in Oregon. Well, you'll have pretty... Uh, Quick trip to be able, well, not necessarily because you might drive. Oh, yeah. Uh, but uh, still, uh, still here in the <laughs> Northwest neighborhood. So it's good to have you uh, in the program, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about your session, but maybe just start with talking about uh, your background and the types of things you're involved in for work. Sure. Yeah. So my background is mostly in digital design. Uh, my undergrad was kind of focused on uh, design, web development. Uh, my master's was mostly on digital arts. So I started to do more game design. And then I was teaching at Stetson University for three years, uh, basically web design, game development, and a few other kind of digital design related things. Uh, so I've been back in Portland now for a number of years, uh, worked in healthcare. Uh, e-commerce agency space, and so now I'm working at Avanode, which is uh, the private charter aviation platform. And uh, when you first brought the proposal to me, you, you mentioned uh, Avanode, which is uh, uh, in the aviation industry. Was it, it's a part of it that I'd never really thought too much about or, or, or considered, so maybe talk a little bit about uh, who your uh, organization supports and how that's set up. Yeah, totally. So uh, it's a little different than kind of the traditional airlines like Delta or Southwest where, you know, they have thousands of aircraft. Uh, private charter aviation is uh, thousands of different operators, uh, each with an aircraft of maybe one fleet size to literally hundreds. And they kind of service that market of individuals who basically want to fly privately. Uh, so them and their family or friends from one location to the next. It certainly uh, is a higher price tag, but uh, for those in that income bracket, it's uh, small, small pennies on the dollar. So. And so for, for your organization and how it supports uh, its uh, uh, client airlines, are there, uh, is, is there uh, like, one large scale system that you deal with or is there a vertical of different types of things? Yeah, so we have a number of different products that we support. Uh, the first one being the marketplace itself, which is essentially where brokers or direct clients will go to search for trips uh, in the same way that uh, you or I might uh, search for trips on Kayak uh, from those larger providers. They will try to find those flights from individual operators. Um, so that's our, our main one, and there's an accompanying iOS app, which also allows individuals to search for those trips. Um, the one that I'm primarily focused on is Scudero, which is our uh, fleet operations software. So that's where these operators can manage the schedule for their aircraft, their crew. Um, they can log their flight times and track maintenance. Uh, so it's kind of a full suite of all things operations for, for those operators. Uh, and then the third branch is Paynote, which is our payment platform. Uh, so we kind of span those three products, uh, and then Scudero just recently released its uh, crew app, which is where pilots and crew members can see their schedule, all their trip details, and then log their flight and duty times. All right. Well, that's a lot of stuff. So, so it, it's a lot more than I would have thought about in our initial uh, conversation. But uh, yeah, a lot going on. Is uh, uh, any uh, particular uh, challenges you're encountering now or any uh, things that you're passionate about in, in, in terms of things you're working on? Uh, sure, yeah. The, I mean, the biggest challenges are scaling, as always. Uh, so uh, I was kind of brought on as the first uh, dedicated UX, UI designer, and so we've started to scale the team out. Uh, so my challenge has been uh, the fact that we're across three different locations. We have our office in Portland, our sales and support team in Miami, and then 
our uh, office in Gothenburg, Sweden, which supports uh, the marketplace. So we're kind of across nine different time zones, trying to stay in sync on process and projects. Each of us is kind of working in our own, you know, individual products. And then my role as uh, the UX UI manager is to kind of oversee a lot of that uh, ongoing work to make sure that we're staying consistent in terms of uh, the things that we're building. So certainly, yeah, time difference and traveling back and forth between offices um, is uh, you know, one of the bigger, the bigger challenges. Well, I, I think that relates to uh, the topic that you're going to be uh, uh, presenting, which is scaling UX UI design for continuous deployment. We hadn't talked about the continuous deployment part, but maybe uh, give uh, people uh, an idea of the types of things that uh, you'll be talking about and they'll be learning about in the session. Sure. Yeah. So it's mainly focused on that, uh, kind of building out that initial uh, process, uh, introducing UX research, uh, you know, to a company that previously didn't have it. How do you kind of move a company to be more user driven? And then as you see that success, then scale that out uh, to, to more and more team members uh, and especially the, the remote aspect of it. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that's really the focus there is what's the process, how do you build it out, how do you scale it, um, and how do you kind of pivot the business to be more um, user focused. And, and continuous or, or very frequent deployment it is more and more uh, the default for uh, most of the products and services we work with. So uh, how does that manifest itself in uh, your particular industry and the things that you're involved in? Yeah, totally. So, you know, past experience was kind of large organizations where you may be a little bit more waterfall or kind of slowly transitioning to uh, a more formal agile process. Um, so here, yeah, we do continuous release. So we could have uh, three or four releases a day, uh, dozens over the course of a week and hundreds over the course of a year. So the, the challenge there is, you know, how do you stay uh, nimble enough in your research practice uh, and also fast enough in your kind of design iteration uh, to, to keep up with that many that much development work that's ongoing at various different stages and and how to continuously integrate with uh, the QA and testing process the uh, your product owners and project managers and uh, yeah just keeping all of those things uh, you know finely tuned and able to support that. You know, uh, I, I would imagine also that the, being part of the aviation uh, world puts a lot of pressure in terms of uh, just the, the accuracy and the efficiency of uh, that, doing that deployment on a regular day-by-day -day basis without, without any hiccups. Oh, totally. Yeah, because absolutely, you're supporting uh, operations where they have, you know, I mean, flights going out every single day, and so making sure that, yeah, the system is is working efficiently, that they're able to get the latest information. There's a lot of safety issues. There's a lot of regulation around that industry as well. So many of us, when we are kind of introduced to the industry, we spend a lot of time just learning you know, the ins and outs of what it is to, to be a pilot or, you know, what are the legal ramifications of uh, releasing a trip for, yeah, uh, for this things that, uh, you know, when you work in other industries, you just, you never really encounter. So it is uh, a little bit of a, a steep learning curve and uh, an interesting kind of niche uh, market to, to work with. Well, I agree. It's really interesting. I'm glad we were able to uh, get you in the program and I look forward to seeing you uh, in Seattle in March. Yep, very excited. Thank you so much.